let's use some of features for grouping similar documents. Clustering leverages unsupervised learning to group data points or documents. It is an unsupervised method, which implies that it seeks to find relationship between the n observations without being trained by a response variable, like in classification. There are two important types of clustering methods, partitional and hierarchical. In partitional, data objects are divided into non-overlapping subsets, where each data points belong to only one subset. In hierarchical, a set of nested clusters are organized as a hierarchical tree. Let's focus on hierarchical clustering for text clustering. It can be divided into two main types, agglomerative and divisive. Agglomerative clustering, also known as Agnes, agglomerative nesting. It works in a bottom-up manner. Each object is initially considered as a single element cluster or leaf, and at each step of the algorithm, two clusters that are most similar to each other are combined into a new bigger cluster, which is node. This procedure is iterated until all the points are merged, and the result of, a, and the result of such a tree can be plotted as a dendrogram. Divisive hierarchical clustering, also known as Diana divisive analysis, works in a top-down manner. This inverse order of Agnes. It begins with the root, where all objects are included in a single cluster, and at each step, the most heterogeneous cluster is divided into two. The process is iterated until all objects are in their own clusters. Note that sometimes agglomerative clustering is good at identifying small clusters, while divisive clustering is good at identifying large clusters. We will use an agglomerative clustering algorithm here, which is hierarchical clustering bottom-up approach. So each observation or document will start in its own cluster, and clusters will be successively merged using a distance metric that measures distances between data points in the linkage merge criterion. However, a bigger question is, how do we measure the dissimilarity between two clusters of observations? A number of different cluster agglomeration methods or linkage methods have been developed to answer this question. Let's look first at maximum or complete linkage clustering. It computes all pairwise dissimilarity between the element in document 1 and element in document 2 and consider the largest value, the maximum value, and it tends to produce more compact clusters, as you can see in the figure. Minimum or single linkage clustering compute all pairwise dissimilarity between element and two documents and considers the smallest of these dissimilarities, minimum value, and it tends to produce lone and loose clusters, as you can see in the top right. Mean or average linkage clustering computes all pairwise dissimilarities and considers the average of these dissimilarities. And finally, Ward's minimum variance method minimizes the total within cluster variance. So at each step, the pair of clusters with minimum between cluster distance are merged, as you can see in the bottom right in the figure. Pairwise document similarity in the corpus involves computing document similarity for each pair. So if we have C documents in our corpus, we would end up with C by C matrix. Each row and column will represent the similarity score for a pair of documents. And this represents the indices at the row and column, respectively. Let's choose the word minimum variance method as our linkage criterion. At each step, we'll find a pair of clusters that leads to the minimum increase in total within cluster variance after merging. We're going to use our similarity matrix that we've built using TF-IDF scores. The product of linkage, Z in our case, will tell us which clusters were merged at step I. Each row has four elements. The first two elements in the table are either data points, identifier, or cluster label. The third element is the cluster distance between two elements, and the last element is the total number of data points in a cluster once the merge is complete. We can see how each data point starts as an individual cluster and is slowly merged with other data points to form a cluster. By drawing dendrogram, a tree representation of hierarchical clustering, we can see that the model correctly identifies three major cluster if you consider distance metric as a cutoff at the line 1 here, and for instance, document 
527 form the first cluster, document 106, the second cluster, and document 34, the third cluster. We use our TF IDF features to build similarity matrix, which help us in clustering our documentation. So let's add labels to our documents so that we can build our table for, let's say, future classification. Let's use F cluster method and add cluster labels. And you notice we have our documents in the first column, document category, those are labels, and cluster label in the third column. This is a good pipeline in the future for clustering your own documents, starting with document normalization, similarity, matrix, and finally, hierarchical clustering. Topic modeling is another good task for our features. The idea of topic models revolves around the process of extracting key themes or concepts from a corpus of documents. Each topic can be represented as a bag or collection of words, terms, from the document corpus. Terms can signify specific topic, theme, or concept, and it is extremely useful in summarizing large corpus of text documents to extract and depict key concepts. We will use here another technique called latent Dirichlet allocation, LDA, which uses a generative probabilistic model. Each document consists of a combination of several topics, and each term or word can be assigned for a specific topic. In addition, Scikit-Learn enables us also to generate topics, so we do not have to specify them manually. Document term matrix used in topic modeling will be broken into two components. A document topic matrix, which would be the feature matrix, and topic term matrix, which will help us to look at potential topics in the corpus. Let's use here our term frequency matrix. We need first to specify number of topics. And if we choose the number of topics to be less than documents, using LDA becomes a way of reducing dimensionality. Let's choose here number of topics equal 3, and number of topics is defined as n components. When we build our output, you can clearly see which documents contribute the most to which of the three topics in the output. You notice each term is represented as a probability score for each topic. Let's extract LDA components now. Each component consists of a weight and a term from which we can select those that contribute, let's say, greater than 60% or 0.6. Let's add also our vocabulary that we built from count vectorizer by using get feature names. And now we can see which word or which term belongs to which topic. For instance, the topic one will contain sky, blue, beautiful, today in love terms. All three topics are quite distinct from each other based on their constituent terms. 